part two of the well. Um, as I was saying, anything that you enjoy, that when people talk about, oh, it's just the taste of meat, oh, it's the taste of chicken parmesan, how can I give that up? You can. You can because there are so many amazing plant-based options out there that even the most hardcore meat eaters that I've brought on um, to come and eat something like a Beyond Burger or an Impossible Burger, um, there's even variations of fish you can get, plant-based fish, depending on where you live in the world. A lot of the major cities have so much access to incredible progressive restaurants serving plant-based food that tastes amazing even far better than any of the meat i used to eat or any of the chicken parmigianas or any of the sushi um there are so many wonderful options out there that are healthier for your body that are good for the environment that also means that you're not adding to any of the suffering that's already rife on this planet so that's my little spiel. Um, I did it. I am plant-based for the animals. I am plant-based for my health and I am plant-based for the environment and for the future for my children. These are all the reasons why we are a plant-based family and I haven't ever felt healthier. I haven't ever felt more aligned with who I am, my heart, my spirit. And I actually just can't believe it took me so long to get to that place. But I needed that internal shift to happen before I showed up and said, hi, helicopter. Um, before I showed up and said, oh, this isn't, this isn't me. And in fact, I hate anything suffering. And the further I looked into it and the more I was inspired by people like Greta Thunberg, I can never say her name right, but I'm really trying, as you can see, um, and George Monbiot, and even there are people like uh, Billie Eilish now, who so many people look up to, and she's a very, very passionate vegan. And she talks about all the choices and all the reasons why she's vegan. Um, and I can see all these amazing people with these profiles using their voice and talking about what plant-based living is and actually how necessary it is for us to be able to live in the kind of environment that we're used to. I was speaking to a scientist um, about three weeks ago. I, I interviewed a scientist, um, Dr. Emily Fisher from Science Mums, and she was talking about sustainability and she said, we have about 12 years up our sleeve and that's it. So unless we are all actively making decisions that are challenging, that might feel uncomfortable at the start, that might um, be confronting, unless we're actually all showing up and playing our part, our world will not survive the way it's going. And we were asking her, please tell us what are all the ways in which we can help the situation. And she said, well, lessening meat intake, lessening your carbon footprint. The first step you can take is taking out meat, taking out dairy from your diets. Now that's hard for a lot of people just to stop cold turkey and to make such a significant change in their life. She talked about the fact that you can take baby steps. You can do one week being plant-based and then one week where a few days a week you have a bit of meat or once a week you have a bit of meat or a bit of dairy. And ultimately, most people will end up getting there in their own time. But just having setting the intention and knowing that this is something you're working towards for our planet, for yourself, for your health, for the animals. Um, it feels really good. It feels like I'm a part of such an important movement and that I have made the choice to really stand up and to do my part. Um, that feels really good. And the other thing she told me was Use your voice, use your voice. And I think I, being sort of the sensitive person I am, um, I've often been 
I don't know if afraid is the right word, but I'm often been a little bit hesitant to be so vocal about our choices, but I'm so passionate about it. I realize that actually all I have is my voice and I have a platform and if I can start to use my voice and I can see how it's affecting change, then I need to do that. And I see it with in the in the playground with my little son Bodhi with him telling people why he's vegan. And he's got two very, very good friends who were sort of interested in what he was talking about. And then ultimately when they made the connection that they were choosing, these children were choosing to eat animals, I don't think the kids understood or wrapped their head around the concept that actually what they were eating were the same things that they really love to go and see out in the paddocks or to go and, um, you know, go to a petting zoo and cuddle them or to have chickens running around in their backyard and collecting the eggs. Um, They didn't, the disconnection was there for those children. And I remember when I found that out as a child, I found out that I was eating an actual chicken. (laughs) It was a chicken and I, I used to think that the chicken died of natural causes, but I'm glad that my parents were honest with me about that. And once I realized that, there was a long period of time where I refused to eat any animals because I was like, I love animals. Why would I eat animals? But animals are my friends. And that's how my, my children feel. And I love seeing the ripple effect of their beliefs because I've seen so many other children so beautifully make that decision for themselves, even when their parents eat meat. Um, And I see my little seven-year-old being the only vegan in his class, but using his voice and seeing how that's impacting these other children and seeing the empathy and the sensitivity and the the curiosity that they have surrounding plant-based living. And two of his best friends have gone completely plant-based Um, and their mothers message me. They're like, oh my gosh, we make our child a separate meal. And then all of a sudden, three months later, you know what, we're all, we're all a little bit curious of the plant-based eating. I think we're going to lean into this. So it's beautiful to use your voice and whatever it is you're passionate about, you should always use your voice in that way. So that is my journey and my experience with, uh, eating with becoming plant-based and there's another thing I wanted to touch about in terms of um, food and meal times and getting obsessive with food because I've also done that too I've done the opposite where I get um, I binge eat I, well, I was like in a really sort of emotional place in 2012 I was just going through a breakup and I was eating all my feelings. (laughs) Even if I was full, I was still eating my feelings. And I definitely um, sort of swung to the other side. And whilst I was like thoroughly enjoying eating food, I was eating too much food and I was over ordering. And then I was always um, not eating all of it, but then feeling super full and uncomfortable and gassy and all those issues too. So eventually um, I sort of realized that actually the trigger for me, it was a, it, this was all coming from an emotional place and I had to internalize and go in and sort of kind of massage those feelings and work through them, unpack them all. And then eventually I ended up having just a beautiful relationship with food. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not, I don't. I don't overeat. I choose relatively healthy, nutrient-dense foods, but I also indulge. I have muffins. I do eat sugar. I eat tons of bread. I love bread. Um, And something that I can be quite guilty of is I get so excited about food, I eat it really fast. There's a new burger that I just found here, this vegan burger that I use Beyond Me at um, this restaurant here in LA called Honey Bee. Oh my God, it's so good. But every time it comes, I scoff it down and then it's finished. So I was reading through one of my favorite books um, and I actually flicked open to day 15. So this author goes through different days of 
it's called the art of stopping time. So kind of slowing down, taking stock of what's happening in your life and how to just stop being so busy. And I just wanted to read a little bit from day 15 because this is about meal time. Today we focus on our meals. It is so easy to get carried away in our busy lives and forget to slow down around food. Eating has been lost in the frenzy of activities and has been relegated to another box to check on our daily list. Not today. Let's take it back. Meal time is ritual time. It is our opportunity to pause and embrace a slower quality of time so that we can nourish our bodies, absorb nutrients, and relax into that digestive process. This is where we get strong. Our fight or flight sympathetic nervous system is in overdrive. This is where our body is in crisis mode. Stress signals our body to store fat, move blood to reactive parts of the brain, tense muscles and draw energy away from digestion and immunity. That is not a good way to roll long term, but that's where many of us live. It is time to break this cycle. Today, every time you sit down for a meal, take 10 breaths down to your lower abdomen and relax into your body. This immediately settles you into a different state. The parasympathetic nervous system is where we digest, recover, heal, relax. Lower abdominal breathing naturally puts us in that state. Drop in, settle your breath. Now let's look at your meal. This food is actually life. If you're eating right, you should draw all of your food from unprocessed sources. This means real vegetables, fruits, grains, or meats, which I don't think she's a meat eater because she writes in brackets, if you choose to do so. <laughs> all of this food came from things that were recently alive. You are ingesting this life and allowing it to power your body and nourish your cells. This life has lain down on a sacrificial altar and is allowing you to continue living. That's heavy. And by the way, that's one of the reasons why I also stopped eating meat because I was feeling as though I was ingesting the fear of an animal and the suffering of an animal. And I was actually physically ingesting those cells and those feelings and those emotions. And I would always feel heavy after eating meat. Um, and I read that in a book. It was a Buddhism book. And it, it rung so true to me. Anyway, take a moment and give thanks for the food in front of you. Look at it, smell it for 20 seconds, take time to taste and chew it at least 20 times before swallowing. I never do this, <laughs> but I'm going to now. After each bite, put down your utensils or the food itself if you're eating with your hands while you chew and swallow. Slow down and adopt an attitude of thankfulness and reverence for your food, and it will transform your entire life. Not only will you be more relaxed, but also you will eat less, you will chew more, you will digest better, assimilate and nourish your cells, and have less inflammation in your body. How crazy is that? It's so simple. There are so many good things that happen around this ritual that you will be shocked to see the benefits. They accumulate over time. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Take time with each meal today and savor it. Slow down and enjoy the ritual of eating. It may take you an extra 10 minutes to finish your food, but you will be less tired, less wired, and more energized after the meal. Ideally, take 10 to 15 minutes after eating to simply relax and enjoy some downtime. Making this a habit will give you more energy, clarity, and overall health to run the test of your day effectively. I love this book so much. The Art of Stopping Time, Practical, uh, practical Mindfulness for Busy People by Pedram Shojai. I definitely didn't pronounce that correctly, but she's a genius and I really recommend this book. All right, guys, that is it from me. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm going to sit here and finish my green juice before I go back into parenting. All right, guys, I will see you for the next episode of The Well.